I would say my third milestone was uh, when the founder of the company, who is my late father, handed over the reins to his three daughters. And I think that was a, a big milestone for us as a group and as a family. Can you give us an overview of the SS Ali Al Ghur Group's evolution and how its journey has been intrinsic to the development of Dubai as a trading hub? So the Al Ghur Group was established in 1960 by the chairman and founder, Isa Saleh Al Ghur, who is my father. So I am the second generation in this family business. The group really played an integral part of the business community in the 1960s, when Dubai itself was growing and you know thriving and so we have grown within these six decades with the growth of Dubai and we've seen the progress and if you really look at Dubai the three pillars that make up the success of this city is tourism, the business community and real estate and we form a big part of the business community and even the real estate part of Dubai's uh, progress and we'd like to really think of ourselves as partners in progress in the future of Dubai, staying relevant to our stakeholders and to our customers and to the city of Dubai that is a fantastic city to be in. Tell us a little about your work and the milestones that you are most proud of today. So upon graduation, I worked for a short period of time in the advertising industry. And in the year 2000, I joined the Isa Saleh Al Ghur Group, which is our family business. We were really looking at marketing and communications in a very different way. So we were at this transitional stage in our company. And so it was pretty exciting at the time. Three milestones really in uh, my career. The first milestone uh, was in the year 2009 when the entire world was going through a recession and so was the UAE. Uh, I had just graduated uh, f with my executive MBA from London Business School and I was told to head the retail side of the business because retail was struggling. And so at the time I found it quite daunting, but really once I, I you know, went into it, it was so interesting. And I really thrived within uh, the retail sector because of my background in marketing and in branding and communications. And I've never looked back. I would say my second milestone was uh, when I realized that I am very passionate about uh, women and girls empowerment in the Middle East and the Arab world. And so I launched my scholarship at London Business School for Arab women. We are now on to the fifth recipient of the Munal Gurk Scholarship. Uh, and it really pleases me to see so many women from different sectors thrive upon graduation, reach that C-suite level within their careers. So that's really my second milestone. I would say my third milestone was uh, when the founder of the company, who is my late father, handed over the reins to his three daughters. And I think that was a, a big milestone for us as a group and as a family. And in April of this year, I became the vice chairperson of the Isa Saleh Al Ghur group. And I really look forward to creating a sustainable business uh, that you know, will operate for generations to come. I do plan to work with the next gen on um, governance policies uh, and creating a sustainable growth for uh, the Algor Group. What have been some of the biggest challenges while leading retail at SSL Algorg? And how have you turned them into opportunities for growth? Retail comprises of 20% of the group, which has uh, 27 companies and 370 brands across many sectors. So that's the group, really. And I would say, really, that um, a challenge, but also an opportunity that we saw was COVID-19 and the pandemic when it hit. The challenge was really that we, uh, obviously a lot of our stores, you know, uh, closed doors and we did not have the in-store traffic that we usually have. And that really turned into an opportunity for us because we accelerated our e-commerce and digital presence and focus. And so that really forced us in, in many ways 
to um, you know, really focus on our customers and ensure that they have a seamless experience uh, you know, from the point that they start their research right up to acquiring one of our products. And so really that focus has resulted now within stores obviously opening up and we've seen the results and the revenue of that investment in e-commerce for our retail operations because now that the stores are open, we see a more conscious consumer who understands what our products are all about and really we know our customers better. I would also say another opportunity and really going forward in the future is the conscious consumer. A lot of the Gen Zs and the millennials of this world research the products that they buy uh, from a sustainable point of view and it's important to them that the product that they use has an environmental impact in some way and so that's again something that we really think about whether it be in partnering with certain brands or whether it be the products that we do sell. We try our best to you know, incorporate those kind of policies uh, within our group. What is your approach to leadership? A good leader is a leader who empowers others, who listens to others, and helps others reach their best potential. And so for the last decade, I have been heading the Young Arab Leaders, where I have seen through mentorship programs, internship programs, how you know, young people have thrived within their fields and how important these programs have been for them. And so again, within Al Gurg, the same, we have you know, a very much a top-down kind of decision-making on this. Our employees are really important to us and we've seen how you know, mentorship program that we started within our group has really, really helped a lot of employees uh, sort of come out of their comfort zone and learn from the experts. And so I think that's important uh, from a leadership perspective to invest in those programs. Also, I believe that we need to think and dream big, but also we need to be kind to ourselves along the way. And so I feel that when we face any uncertainty, we need to lean in rather than run away and, and find that one person who will help us you know, reach our, our best potential. How do you create impact through philanthropy initiatives and why is it personally important to you? I think charitable giving has been part of the DNA of our family. And I've learned a lot from my parents and their giving within their lives. So that has really inspired me. And I think impact is a global phenomenon now. People are starting to think about their charitable giving and their philanthropy as equally as important as they think about their investments, and rightly so. I think impact is a big part of it. So like in an investment, there's a return on your investment. Impact is a return on your charitable giving. And I'll give you a good example of that. We built a school in Zanzibar uh, about 10 years ago. And the building of the school was actually the easy part. The impact of that school and the sustainability of that school was the difficult part. So how do we ensure that faculty continue to get good training? How do we ensure that the operational cost of the school is, continues? So I think impact is a very important part of decision making for the sustain sustainability of projects. And I hope to establish now and plan to establish my own foundation for Arab women and girls uh, and their economic empowerment in the Middle East. And I really look forward to seeing uh, the foundation create pathways for women and girls and you know, l allow them to reach their best potential. How is the Ulgur Group focusing on sustainability across its operations? So at Algor Group, we take a comprehensive approach to sustainability, to protect people and planet. And so we're quite stringent on, let's say, e-wastage or recycling of our paper, which we do at a centralized factory called Gulf Metal Foundry, or even um, very strict on plastic consumption. So we have water filling stations all over our operations. Uh, so we're quite, you know, adherent to those uh, policies. And those policies, again, have come from, a, from the top, right from the top. Uh, so really, those are some of the things within al uh, We also have a company called Technical and Trading, and that company has a energy savings credited uh, services that we can offer 
to our customers. We can have energy audits, etc. So that's on the group side. I would say on a personal note, I am on the board of Emirates Nature, which is uh, affiliated to the Worldwide Fund for Nature. And so over there, we really look at strategic policies within the UAE and again, look at policies that impact nature conservation. So one of the latest projects that we've worked on is the Al Bithna project in uh, Fujairah that has revived the old irrigation uh, system of the UAE called the Felaj system. And this has really created a community within uh, Fujairah that has really sustained a lot of the nature there. So that's one of the things that we've worked on recently, as well as many other policies that affect the UAE's uh, nature conservation. What is the best piece of advice that you have ever received? So the best piece of advice was from my late father when he said to me that it's really important when faced with an uncertainty or a challenge or a difficult situation to sleep on it and not react immediately. And once you wake up the next day, then you can react. A person outside your field that inspires you the most and why? A woman I really look up to currently is Christine Lagarde. Not only is she a very strong woman within her field and a very male-dominated field, which is finance, where she was uh, president of the IMF and now obviously the European Central Bank, but she's also a family woman who has managed to kind of balance both her career and her family life. And I look up to her as someone who is a confident, strong woman, surrounded by men, but has thrived and done so well.